Welcome back everybody. This is going to be part 18 of the Minneapolis Moline X231 tractor restoration series and I've got the boring bar ready to go. The cutter bits are all installed and uh, I'm going to start removing material from the repaired area of this rear end case here in just a minute. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to bring the camera down in here and give you a little better idea of what I'm trying to accomplish. So this is a sketch that's meant to resemble a cross section of the interior of the case just below this uh, this top edge right here. And this is the live power shaft bearing bar that I'm going to have to return back to proper spec with the boring bar. I'm going to have to return it to a 2.185 inch diameter. And I will have to remove material primarily on this edge over here until I get into this area where I need to make sure to leave a shouldered portion that is 3 and 7 16 inches in from the back side of the case. What that is going to do is allow the sleeve that holds the bearings for the live power shaft to come in to the case and essentially the sleeve will bottom out on this shoulder which will prevent it from moving any farther forward. That's going to properly locate those bearings and get me set up to uh, be able to position the live power shaft where it needs to be. And because the bulk of that new material that was added to that interior broken portion of the case was put primarily to this side I'm going to have what's known as an interrupted cut with the boring bar. That means that for every revolution of the cutter bit, only a fraction of that revolution is going to uh, have the cutter bit really even contacting any metal. Uh, the rest of the revolution is just going to be hanging out in open space, at least until I can make that hole round again. So because of the interrupted cut, I'm going to have to take uh, rather small bites. Um, I can't really advance the cutter bit to make too deep of a cut for fear of uh, flexing the bar and uh, it's probably going to take a lot of passes in and out in order to get that, um, that bore brought back around again. took probably 30 passes but I've got the bar out to the desired 2.185 so I'll withdraw the bar have a look at it first look inside with the bar out of the way I see plenty of chips down in the bottom of the case that's proof that we've had at least a little bit of fun we'll attempt to uh, get a shot of the newly machined bearing bar here and you can see up at the front the shoulder that I was able to leave and there's plenty of material left up there so that's a good thing. Now we'll check and see how the bearing sleeve fits. Perfect! So now that I've verified that the bearing sleeve fits properly the next step is to move the bar forward so that I can begin facing the forward edge of that bore. Um, quite a lot of that new material is going to have to be removed so what I'm going to do is start with a bit that's set rather shallow in the bar that's only going to cut a small radius. I'll mill it back as far as I'm going to need to go, pull the bar back forward, I'll then withdraw the bit a little bit at a time, I'll mill a slightly larger radius and a slightly larger one after that until I've got a sufficient amount of material out of the way. So the face machined up well. I stopped right there because that's all the farther I need to go. Uh, you can see now I've got a shorter bit loaded in the bar. That is so that I can uh, true up this counter bore that's just inside of the face area. I need to uh, finish this uh, portion off to provide a good uh, surface for the thrust washer that goes behind the live power clutch. <laughs> bearing bore was the last bit of machining I had to do with the boring bar so that means I'm finished with these brackets and get them out of the way. 
So here are the results of our work with the boring bar. Uh, we've got a good bearing sleeve bore established, a nice shoulder for it to come up against so it won't drift forward. I've been able to establish a good face for the thrust washer on the PTO clutch, and I was able to remove enough material from the face of the bore to clear the gear that's on the back end of that PTO clutch. And if you can see here, the way it's going to come in, should be plenty of clearance for that gear to run. So of course the next step now is going to be milling material in off the side of this bore for that belt pulley drive gear that's going to come in. And we'll reference back to the production rear end again. Guys, I know I've showed you this before, but just to refresh your memory, we're going to have to end up looking quite a lot like this. Uh, a lot of material has to come off to make clearance for that gear, so it's going to get pretty thin over there. But that's going to uh, bring part 18 to a close though. We'll address uh, removing the rest of this material over here, probably in part 19. So guys, as always, I thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you like what you're seeing. Feel free to leave comments. And I always like it when you subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you back again.